Thank you, my darling cat. Bye. Hello everyone. The plate was from my big boy who's just finished his dinner. Came in late from work, quickly wolfed down his pizza and I just put the plate in the dishwasher for him. <sighs> How are we all keeping tonight? It is sweltering hot here in Melbourne. Our weather station says it's still 34 degrees outside. Yikes. At 7.30 at night, that is really hot. But never mind, we'll get through tonight's show really quickly and easily and hopefully, coolly. I've got the fans going and it's not too bad in here anyway. So I thought because we're in the midst of another heat wave that I'd do a couple of no-bake slices because everyone likes a sweet treat, even when it's roasting hot outside. And nobody wants to bake a sweet treat and have the oven heat up the house. And I do one of my favorite summer drinks, which is a really simple iced coffee syrup that was um, first submitted to the recipe file by the lovely Joy of Quilting, who is a great contributor to the Cheapskates Club. So if you ever go through the recipe file and find one of Joy's recipes, know that it is good, know that it is cheap, know that it is easy. She's an amazing cook. So we'll start off with the um, iced coffee syrup because that is my favourite summer drink. It's so refreshing if you get a really chilled iced coffee and very expensive to buy. So make them at home. Then you can have them whenever you like, and they're just brilliant. This is a really easy recipe of Joy's. She's modified it from an old recipe that she found, and it's a simple, simple syrup um, with some coffee and some vanilla added to it. So we'll start off. I need to boil the kettle. While I'm boiling the kettle, I've measured out um, 50 grams of instant coffee. You probably won't be able to see, but anyway, 50 grams of instant coffee. And I'll pop that into a saucepan. And now I need a kilo of white sugar. So here we go. Kilo. Oops, sugar going everywhere. I'd pick it up and pour it in, but it weighs too much and my wrists aren't strong enough to hold it and it'll go everywhere. So bear with me while I measure out just a kilo. There you go. Kilo of white sugar into the pan. And I don't think I hit the right button on the kettle. I can't hear any noise. There we go. It'll boil in a second. Once the um, water's boiled, I'll add 500 mils of water to the saucepan and light the gas and start the cooking process. It only takes a few minutes. I'll be using my trusty balloon whisk for this because I want to uh, dissolve the sugar in the water and boil it so that it makes a syrup. Once it's ready, once it's thick, it needs to be thick like um, ice cream topping, that sort of thickness. I'll add some trusty vanilla, a little more cold water, and we'll be able to bottle it. And once it's cool, we can enjoy it with um, skim milk, soy milk, almond milk, whole cream, full cream milk, whatever milk you like. Kettle's boiled. Now I pre-measured 500 mils into the kettle so I know I can empty it and it'll be the right amount of water. There we go. Like the gas. Now I want this to be, I want it to boil but I want it to be gentle because I don't want to burn the syrup. So just over a medium heat and start whisking or stirring. It won't take long for the sugar to dissolve because the water is already boiling 
and it smells good already anyway. Can you smell the coffee, Hannah? Oh, yep. Yum. Alright. Once it comes to the boil and starts boiling, it will start to thicken like a syrup does. Now this is based on just your normal simple syrup, which is equal parts water and sugar for a simple syrup that can be used for all sorts of um, sauces and cordial bases. You can make a light syrup if you're not worried, if you're, sorry, make a light syrup if you are worried about um, sugar and that's simply double the water to the sugar. And if you want something sweeter and thicker, you can make a heavy syrup, which is double the sugar to the water. <laughs> anyway, so the sugar's all dissolved. I want this to boil and thicken up. In Joy's notes, and the recipe is um, on the website. You'll find it on the Cheap Cakes Club website in the drinks recipe file. Or if you type iced coffee syrup into the search, it'll pop up. It'll be the first item of the search. In Joy's original notes, she says to watch that it doesn't overboil while you're stirring and to use a big saucepan. So I'm using my deepest saucepan to make it. And it's starting to thicken up nicely. As soon as it's thickened, I'll add the vanilla, then I'll add the water, the cold water. I'll bring it back to the boil and let it cool a bit before I pour it into a bottle to store in the fridge. Now, I just use these um, bottles, these old-fashioned cap-type bottles, because they're easy to seal and they fit in the drawer of the fridge really easily too. I got mine from the reject shop, I think. They're about $2 each. I've got quite a few of them for different things. They're great for homemade cordials. If you do the 50-50 cordial or lemon cordial, orange cordial, they're really good for that too in the fridge. Okay. It's not quite thick enough, but it's getting there. So, yeah, Joy's original recipe takes 30 minutes. So we don't have 30 minutes in this heat to stand and stir. Is that noise really annoying? The whisking? Keep, keep it going though. So when you make it up, depending on how strong you like your coffee, I like strong coffee, so I use probably about a quarter of a glass and fill it up with cold milk. Um, if you like it weaker, you can use it to taste and see how you like it. Um, it's just delicious. Leave enough room in the top to add some ice cubes to keep it cold while you're drinking it. Or you can be like one of the cafes and top it with whipped cream and grated chocolate and all sorts of stuff like that and have a Ice I'll have, cream. I'll have one in the morning, thanks. Yeah, yeah, make your own in the morning, thanks, sweetheart. I'm not making it. I'll do the syrup. You make the drinks. <laughs> so, there we go. Now, I'm whisking all the time because I don't want it to burn. Being a sugar-based syrup, it will burn quite quickly if we don't watch it. Like jam. Sorry? Like jam. Like jam does, yeah. If you're not stirring all the time, it'll catch on the bottom the minute you turn your back. Okay. Bring my spoon up. Let me see how it's going. Almost there. So I'm going to add the vanilla. It says a half a bottle. Now that's about 100 mils if you buy vanilla. I don't. I make my vanilla. So as you can see, so I just 
I bought it. And I know I'm going against everything I say because I say measure, measure, measure to be sure that it's right. But I just eyeball it. You sort of get to know after a while how much is in a slurp. So give it a stir. There we go. It's coming nicely. Now it smells even better with the vanilla in, doesn't it? I wish we had smell a vision. Oh my gosh, it smells great. That's really good. Some other refreshing drinks you can make with a sugar syrup. Um, do the same thing, but instead of coffee or coffee and vanilla, you could use coffee and hazelnut, um, coffee and what's the other coffee flavour? Caramel. Caramel. You've got vanilla, caramel, hazelnut. Hazelnut, yeah. You could add some mint. You've got mocha. Mocha, add a little bit of cocoa to it to make a mocha syrup. All sorts of things you can do. You don't have to stick with just the plain coffee. While we're waiting on that, I'll say hello to Pamela because I saw she was there first and Narelle. Who else is there? Right. Just waiting on Flossie. All right, so we've got Heidi. Heidi, hi. Michelle Smith. Michelle Smith, beautiful. Diana. Diana. Maureen. Maureen. <laughs> joy. Joy, I'm making your syrup, Joy. Different Joy. Oh, wrong Joy, sorry. Joy, Joe. 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 <laughs> Eve, she made this today. You made the coffee syrup today, Eve? And she's uh, pleased to have booked in the library. Eat well, safe. Oh, beautiful. I'm glad you could get it from the library. That's really good. Mm -hmm. We have Sarah. Sarah, hi. And Noella. And Noella. Okay. So, guys, don't forget to um, give us a big thumbs up if you could, please. That would be really good. It lets us know how many people watch. See how, oh, you can't see, but it's starting to come to the boil. And so I'm going to turn the heat down just a little. It's like jam. I don't want it to overflow on my stove because I'm not that clean on, not that keen on cleaning a sticky stove. Keep stirring. A couple more minutes and it'll be ready to um, add the cool water into can. Looking good. So this is actually quite cheap to make. It costs around, okay, with the um, Moo Vanilla, it costs um, 80, about $2 to make. So it's not that expensive. And it makes about a litre and a half, um, depending on how thick you let the syrup get. really you can feel it thickening because you find the spoon is having trouble stirring through it's getting harder to stir through it hasn't caught on the bottom beautiful all right I'm going to turn it off I'm going to add the cold water and stir it in and I'll leave that to cool a bit before I pour it into the bottle. Okay, now I have to move away from the stove. It is so hot. Excuse me while I have a drink. All right. So that's iced coffee syrup. It's really easy to make. It's delicious to drink and it's inexpensive. I know that you can buy um, coffee syrups. Aldi often have them um, as a special buy. They're about $5 for a little 150 ml, 160 ml bottle. So 
I only imagine because I haven't priced them at other stores how much more expensive they are at other stores if they're that price at Aldi. But you can make it yourself so quickly, so easily. The recipe is on our website, so you can go to the Cheapskates Club, type iced coffee syrup into the search bar, it'll pop up straight away. But I'll put a link um, in the show notes at the bottom underneath the video at the end of the show, and you can click on it and go straight to the recipe if you don't already have it. While I'm waiting for that to cool, the next sweet treat is caramello slice. Now, this is a recipe that's been around for, I don't know, since Noah was a boy. It's old. It's nothing particularly difficult. I've been making it for donkey's ears. But it's quick, it's easy, it's tasty. And when chocolate's on sale, it's not that expensive. So this week, the um, Cadbury chocolate is on sale at Coles for $2.40 a block. Half price. Half price. price. But yeah, the size has shrunk. By 20 grams. By 20 grams, yowch. That's a big drop in size. So that's a huge price increase. So I remember when these chocolate bars were 250 grams, then they went to 240 grams, then they went to 225, then they went to 200, and now they're down to 180. So it's the incredible shrinking chocolate bar, like everything else. But all you need for this um, slice, it's really simple. Packet of um, biscuits, plain biscuits, now, I think it says Mari in the recipe, and the recipe is on the recipe file under no bake slices. And if you type caramello slice into the search bar on the website, you'll find it anyway. I used malted milk because that's what I had. Any generic plain biscuit will be fine. Arrowroot, scotch fingers, um, niece, whatever you've got will be fine. Then you need a block of caramello chocolate, which I will break up and put into this bowl because it needs to be melted. I've already whizzed the crumbs. I'll show you again. Already whizzed the crumbs in the food processor. I like them to be nice and fine. You can crush them with a rolling pin in a plastic bag if you want to, but I like them to be fine so that the um, base packs down and becomes quite solid. Now I've had this chocolate in the fridge all day, hiding so nobody would eat it. And here we go, let's break it up. It's really easy. Um, I did wash my hands before the show started too, folks, so please don't panic about dirty fingers or anything. Um, there we go. Anyone have any questions about the syrup or anything else at the minute plus? No, no everyone the cheap alternative to the uh, cowboy chocolate is the LD one. They have a 100 gram block of caramel chocolate for a dollar. Okay, so for two dollars, you get 200 grams of caramel chocolate from Aldi. From Aldi. Okay, so did you all get that? If you can, a cheaper alternative than the Cadbury chocolate is Aldi chocolate. They have a caramello type bar. It's 100 grams for a dollar a packet, so you'd get two blocks, which would be two dollars, which is still 40 cents cheaper than the Cadbury on half price sale. Now, the recipe for the caramel slice is six tablespoons of butter. Six tablespoons is about 125 grams. 125 grams, again, I'm doing what I say don't do, but this is a 500 gram block of butter. So 250 grams is half, 125 grams is a quarter. So I tend to just eyeball it for things like this. If I'm baking something that's a precise science, like a sponge cake, then I do measure accurately because that's important in those recipes. The combinations have to work, otherwise the recipe is a flop. Something like this, it's a bit of a no-brainer to just add a blob of butter to your chocolate and melt it. Now, some of you might have seen the post I put on Facebook today because I suddenly realised I needed condensed milk to make this slice. So, out came the milk powder and the sugar and the butter and some hot water and I made condensed milk. 
This has been in the fridge and it's thickened up nicely. This is the equivalent of half a can of condensed milk. And it will go into this mixture too. Now I just have to melt the chocolate and the butter and I'm going to do that in the microwave and I do it in 30 second bursts because I don't want it to burn and I don't want the chocolate to go all clumpy. You know how compound chocolate can go clumpy if it's not stirred regularly. So. How long does the Sarah, the iced coffee syrup will keep for months. If you put it, um, and by I don't mean, well, fill it with boiling water and let it sit. Actually, the bottom will be hot enough for you to put the hot syrup in. Keep it sealed. It should last for months. There goes the microwave. We have a singing microwave. It's amazing. Give that a stir. It's enough, it won't be long and that'll be ready. Okay, pop it back in. Um, because it's basically just well boiled mildewed, it will if it's um, not kept clean and not kept in the fridge. So keep it in the fridge and it should keep. Now I've lost my. Do the wacky what's it? They can go back there. I need this again. Throw my spoon on. 30 seconds. All right, this looks like it's nearly ready. Good old compound chocolate needs to be mixed up. You can't see me doing this, can you? A little bit. A little bit. Is that kind of? A little bit. Okay. So really want the chocolate to melt. And be smooth and this takes a bit of patience to do this now you can do it over a, a double boiler if you want to you just have to be careful with the double boilers that you don't get water into it because if you get water into it the chocolate will never melt properly because it's a compound it's just going to do it but stirring like this is smoothing it and dissolving it beautifully and i'm about to add some condensed milk i like to add the condensed milk to the chocolate mixture and then add it all to the crumbs rather than try to mix the condensed milk into the crumbs and then mix something else into that blob. Okay, it just works better. Now, we had a great tip posted on Cheapskate's Chatter today too, yesterday, about baking paper in your baking trays. And I'm not sure why I'd never never thought of it before either. But it was simply to use, can you see the little pegs on the side? You know how when you pour your sliced base or whatever into your sliced tray and the baking paper moves and it's very annoying because then you're trying to hold it and press it down and spread it out and roll it and make it flat. The paper's always moving. Clip it to the sides. Now I can't remember whether it was Sally or Sharon, sorry, I'm really sorry, who posted the tip, but they were using clothes pegs. Well, I just opened my drawer and I found these little pegs. Now, these are little quilting pegs that I use to hold fabric in place when I'm sewing instead of pins. So I pulled those out. They're doing a great job of holding that paper in place. I know I could have... Um, buttered the tray or sprayed it with cooking spray and it, the paper would have stuck. But that kind of defeats the purpose of using baking paper. And I'm not a fan of using cooking sprays directly into my tinware because the lecithin in it stains them and they look ugly. And it's really hard to clean off. It's sticky and horrible. Okay, let's get to see how nice and thick that condensed milk is. That's homemade condensed milk. Single moo condensed milk, and I'll put the link to the recipe for this underneath too. But again, it's on the website. Oops. There we go. I have got it everywhere. Messy cook. That's why I wear an apron. Okay, stir that in. Plunk that all into there. 
the whole lot goes in on top of the crumbs, the biscuit crumbs. Oh, I love these silicon spoons. They're as good as spatulas. They're so soft. They scrape everything. Smoosh it all through. Make sure it's all really well mixed through. I'll show you in a minute. It's quite a soft mixture too. It's not a stiff mixture at all, which is really good because you've got to spread it into your pan. So there we go. Whoops, dry bits. We don't want dry bits. Get it all done. That's it done. Like that. Here's my tin. Wash it in, and because it's a soft mixture, it goes in and it spreads really easily. I find I don't need to roll this, whereas some of the other biscuit bases and biscuit slices we make, I use a jar or a glass to roll them. And now, because I've got the um, pegs on the paper, I can just go smush, smush, and it doesn't move. It's brilliant. That's a great tip. And Hannah says, it does taste good. It's a great slice. Now, you could leave it as it is and it's still really good. But I pop it into the fridge for a little while and let it chill up and firm so it doesn't take long, half an hour or so. Pop it into the fridge. There it is done let it chill up and firm and then top it with melted chocolate and it makes a nice chocolate layer on top and I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'll pop this into the fridge. Take it out, my I'm going to fix that. I'm going to run with my fridge. Little bit. Okay. Whoops, lost my balance. Top it with chocolate. And it comes out like that. Now, I'll show you. The other reason for using baking paper is so I can lift it straight out the cutting. It makes it so much easier. All right. Okay, that's Okay. You're the official taste tester. You tell me how it tastes. Oh, I'm hoping. <laughs> Job on you don't need to take it on. You can't take it all. You've got to share. It's good. It's really good. It doesn't take long to make. It doesn't heat up the house. It's a really nice, um, sweet treat. And if you're really strong, and you buy your chocolate on half price sale or you buy it from Aldi, keep it in the freezer if you have to, bury it under the peas or whatever so nobody will eat it. You'll always be able to make it because it doesn't take anything but the biscuits, the chocolate, a bit of butter and the jar of condensed milk, which I've lost. Oh. That's right. I just want to see how the um, coffee syrup is cooling down so that we can pour it into the bottle. I'm just going to pop that back on again and bring it back up to the boil for a minute. And that will be done. Get rid of the scales so I have room to move. All right. Now, um, this is a really basic no-bake slice. One of my favourite no-back slices is the lemon coconut slice, which is with, you know, plain biscuits, coconut, sugar, condensed milk, butter, mix it all up, some lemon zest, mix it all up, and then put a lemon icing on it. And that's a really good slice. But if you use, I had them here somewhere, ginger nuts instead of plain biscuits, still add the lemon zest and the coconut and the sugar and the butter, Press that in and then ice it with a lemon ginger icing or a lemon ginger frosting. It is so good. Alternatively, you can use um, chocolate ripple biscuits or the generic version of chocolate ripple biscuits. 
leave out the lemon zest, add a bit of vanilla in, or peppermint essence instead of the lemon zest and make a chocolate or a cho peppermint slice. It works the same way. Um, the other thing that works really well and the same sort of um, idea is I'm going to be stirring, stirring, is um, Delta creams or orange creams, um, the generic versions. You don't have to buy the expensive versions. Crush them up, press them in with coconut condensed milk and just a slightly half, about half the butter because there's already a bit of fat in those biscuits with the cream. Uh, press that into your base. And if you're doing the chocolate one, the Delta creams, chocolate on top or chocolate icing on top. If you're doing the orange one, white chocolate with a little bit of orange essence in it and have an orange cream slice. It's delicious. They're really easy. And those biscuits um, aren't expensive if you buy the generic brands. Now it's looking. I really want this to be thick so I can show you how thick it's supposed to be. There it comes. None of them are expensive. Now, with the um, Choc Ripple Biscuits, do the same thing. Choc Ripple Biscuits, coconut, sugar, butter, condensed milk. Mix it all up. Then stir through some chopped up glacé cherries and you've got cherry ripe slice. Uh, again, you can leave it plain the way it is. You can put chocolate icing on it or you can top it with melted chocolate. And it's really nice. It's a great way to um, have something sweet to serve for morning tea or afternoon tea that looks like you spent hours in the kitchen, Hannah's thinking, thinking. Could you also add marshmallows to that and have like a rocky road slice? Yes, you could add marshmallows to that and have a rocky road You're making us too much. We've got marshmallows too. Um, you could do, look, experiment. Don't be afraid to try a new flavour, try a new um, biscuit, try a new recipe. Experiment with it and make it your own. Create your own slice, something really delicious. Um, the, the worst thing that can happen is that you don't like it and you've wasted a couple of dollars in ingredients, but you know then that you've tried it and um, you didn't like it. You can move on to something else. Because honestly, during summer, no bake slices are my best friend. I loathe having the oven on in summer. From when daylight saving starts until the end of daylight saving, we hardly cook inside at all. Most of it's done outside on the barbecue. Even our Sunday roasts are done outside on the barbecue. So having the oven on to me during summer is just wrong. It heats up the house. It's expensive. I don't like doing it. It means that I'm cooking instead of someone else. And I'd much rather someone else be doing the cooking. So think about the no-bake slices and what you can do with them. With a packet of biscuits, a little bit of butter, and some condensed milk and go from there and see what you create. Could be the next um, trending thing on Facebook if you share the recipe. Maureen would like to know if we use the Cadbury chocolate on top or the chocolate milk. Oh, Maureen, I always use the Cadbury dairy milk on top. I don't like the melts on top. Don't mind the melts in something, in the in a cheesecake or in a slice. Do not like them on top. Don't know why, but always Cadbury Dairy Milk I'm on top. Blame Granny. Hannah says I have to blame Granny. Yes, probably because that's what she always did. Um, so yeah, no, always Dairy Milk block on top. And the melts are probably exactly the same chocolate. I just have this melted <laughs> mental block about them. So Maureen yeah. said to keep the wrappers for the chocolate cards. Oh, good idea. Oh, I'll have to go through the rubbish. I put two in the bin today. Oh, no. <laughs> right. And on, oh, sorry, ladies, on those cards, 
I've got a block of chocolate, Pamela, so I'll be working out the measurements for the Cadbury card. <laughs> Pamela and I have been making, for those that don't know, Pamela and I spent yesterday making um, chocolate block cards and pretty much a, a gift card, a greeting card, but with a little pocket in it that fits a block of chocolate. And the ones we were making um, fit a block of lint chocolate, but thanks to us. There we go. That's what I made. You can see. Mm -hmm. And inside there's just a little pocket that you pop the chocolate in. The chocolate just slides in there. Um, I made mine for Easter. Thanks, darling. Um, but the lint chocolate's a bit expensive, so we were going to work out how to the measurements to make it to fit a block of cabbage chocolate. So now I've got one, I can do it. And buy the chocolate while it's on sale. You go. Um, all right, how's this syrup going? Yep, all right. Okay, so I'm going to put some hot water in this bottle to warm it up before I put the hot syrup in it because I don't want it to break. It'll just warm the bottle up enough so that. Um, it won't be such a shock to the glass. Burn my fingers. Okay, that'll do. Leave that for a minute to warm up, and then we'll decant the syrup. Um, I will be using a funnel to do that, because otherwise I'd never get it into the bottle. Um, when you make your condensed milk or jams or anything else. This is totally just random thought here. A wide necked funnel is brilliant. When I made the condensed milk this afternoon, it was in my food processor and trying to pour it from the food processor into the jars was a real pain. Having the funnel, it just sat on top of the jar and I could pour it in without worrying about it. I got this at Big W and it was about $3 or something like that. But it works... Um, for jams, for pickles, for chutneys, for condensed milk, anything where you need to pour into a, a wider neck jar. They are really good and well worth the investment if you do a lot of preserving and sauce making, jam making, that sort of thing. Otherwise, it's just my trusty blue one. Put the gas gun away. Um, and I'll put the butter back in the fridge before it melts. That goes back in there, darling. Pop these away. Thank you. Okay. See, a no bake slices are really easy because they don't use a lot of dishes either. Okay. Save that water. Okay, when that water's cooled, I'll run it out, tip it over my, <coughs> excuse me, hanging baskets. They're looking a bit sad. Okay. Move it here. If I move it over, I just don't want to burn you if I pour it. Whoops! Like it was the funnel. Yeah. And it's plastic. It's clean, the floor's clean. And I'll pour it in, mind your fingers. Might need another bottle. Nearly there. There we go. Yep, yep. yep. Okay, that's done. If I want to seal it, I'll put the cork in, pop it down, and that's it done. I'll just wipe um, the bottle before I pop it in the fridge to chill. That's the iced coffee syrup done. What's the ratio to milk? Oh, I went over this, yes. Um, if you like it strong, I use about um, one part coffee, three parts milk. 
You can make it weaker or stronger as you like it. There's no need to add sugar to it, folks. It's, sort of, it's a sugar syrup, so don't think it needs sweetening. It doesn't. Um, but it will um, thicken up a bit more as it cools too, and it'll end up being the consistency of a, an ice cream top, your topping or something like that, um, something similar. So really handy to have. And if you can create a magnificent iced coffee treat when your visitors come, how lardy da is that? Um, especially if you have some of those um, mason jar mugs. Our two dollar shop's got them for a dollar fifty. Oh, it's a two dollar shop. It is a two dollar shop, and they're a dollar fifty. Um, really cute little mason jar mugs with handles and the lid with the, the straw spoon. thing in it. So cute. So if you're so inclined. That's a really nice way to give afternoon tea to visitors too, with a piece of caramel slice, which needs to go back in the fridge because it's melting. Oh, it's very warm in here. Okay. My fridge is full to overflowing. I've made salads for the rest of the week. I've got coleslaw potato salad, pasta salad in the fridge for the rest of the week. All I have to do is put the dressing on the coleslaw and the pasta salad before we eat them and we'll have nice cool dinners for the rest of the week. It looks like I'll be rearranging the meal plan, but what the heck, that's what it's for. That's why we have a meal plan, it's why we have buy ingredients. Um, on that note, I recorded a video earlier today that I may not post. So it was a bit of a rant and I know some of you will find it hard to believe that I would ever rant about anything, but was that a snicker I heard coming from the peanut gallery? Yes. But in my Facebook feed this morning, an ad popped up for a meal kit. And I don't understand what the attraction is to the meal kits, you know, the Hello Fresh or whatever they are. There's a few different ones now. They don't appeal to me at all, but I I can sort of see how people would think they're convenient but there is no way anyone could think they were affordable and this particular meal kit popped up and it said it its claim to fame was and I will quote uh, it is Australia's cheapest meal kit at just drum roll $5.75 per meal. And I went, oh, then it said, comma, per person. $5.75. That's $28.75. It would cost me to use that for the five of us for a meal. And looking at the ingredients and what we get, that's not nearly enough to feed my boys. So I would be cost adding to it anyway. Or if you do the weekly figures for five, five nights, five different meals, it comes to $143.75. Two weeks grocery money, folks, if you're on the $3 a month grocery Three challenge. Not $3. Oh, $300 a month grocery challenge, yeah. See, it's got me so flabbergasted. There is no way these are affordable meals. I don't even think they're that convenient because you still have to unpack it. You still have to cook it. Seriously, if you like the idea of not going to the supermarket, do online grocery shopping because you'll still get it delivered to your door and you still have to cook the meal. All you're doing is, and you're still choosing what you're buying. All you're doing is saving yourself a fortune. They are not cheap. And this one, this ad was getting everyone in because they were offering $10 off. $10 off your first order. They didn't want to be paying you $143.75 to try it. Oh, my goodness. They, see, I told you it was in for a rant. I just don't do it. Do not do it. I was reading the thread and what everyone's doing. And, oh, they've saved us so much money. We pay $300 a week for $300 a week for groceries for a family of six. Seriously? 
why? What are you eating? Fillet steak every night. <laughs> to get back to the meal kit, $143 or the $28.75 per meal, that's one meal for the day. You still have to do breakfast, lunch, morning tea, afternoon tea, supper, drinks, milk, tea, coffee, all those things. So that's not your week's groceries. Done. Oh, my goodness. No. While I admire the um, initiative and the entrepreneurship of whoever came up with these ideas and well done to them, don't. Don't be sucked into thinking they're worth it because, no, they're not. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Sorry, ran over, but, oh, my goodness, they just, it just blows my mind that people will happily sign up for it for three, four or five nights a week and you can have um, two serves or four serves so they wouldn't, so I'd have to order six serves or someone would be very hungry to make it fit my family. But the same people that do that then turn around and complain because they can't pay the gross, they can't pay the power bill or they can't pay for the kids' school excursion or, you know, the car needs repairs and they don't have the money for it. So, no, look. If you are debt free, if you have money in the bank, your emergency fund's fully funded, you've got savings, you're set for retirement, you're totally debt free and you want to do that, by all means, go right ahead. It's your money and you really can spend it on what you like. But if you're not debt free, if you don't have a fully funded emergency fund, if you don't have savings, if you can't pay your bills, if you are behind in bills, if you are living pay to pay, then you cannot afford to do anything like this. So I know I said rant over before, but it got me going again. Sorry. It's over now. It's over now, yes. Just don't do it. Ignore the ads. Unsubscribe from them. Block them on your Facebook or whatever. Don't even look at them. You, you don't want them. They're wrong. Okay. Maureen wants to know, do you normally sterilise the water? For the coffee syrup, Maureen, I wash it, put it through the dishwasher usually in the morning before I go to, I'm going to use it. And then when it comes out of the dishwasher and it's still warm, I fill it up with boiling water out of the kettle and I let it sit till it cools. And that's as close as I can get to sterilising it. If I really wanted to, I could probably put it in a pan and boil it or use some Milton or whatever the generic is of Milton these days. But the good wash in the dishwasher and a good sit with boiling water seems to um, do the job. I've never had any go off on me in terms of go mouldy or anything in the bottle. Um, and I do the same thing for the cordial because it's these cordial, these bottles that I use when I make the cordial too. So same deal, dishwasher, then boiling water and let them sit. Um, works just fine for me. We're all still alive. Nobody's died yet. Sorry, darling. No, no one's died yet. With the chocolate. Do you think that is a good price? More than the five to nine. I don't think it's a good price anymore. I used to have a rule in my price book of one cent per gram was my price for chocolate. And usually around Easter and Christmas, I could get chocolate for one cent per gram. But the last couple of years I've noticed, apart from the miraculous shrinking chocolate blocks the half price hasn't been down to anywhere near the one cent a gram anymore so this is 180 grams and it was two dollars 40 and they say that's half price so for me it's not particularly good value but it is what it is and that's what i have to pay to get this chocolate then that's what i have to pay which means that i need to find the money somewhere else to make it up. Did you compare the price to the bigger box when you bought it though? I didn't compare the price to the bigger box, darling. That's your job. Hannah always, always, always unit price checks everything she buys. 
So she would have picked this up and then picked up the 500, 400 gram block, the great big ones, 400 grams now, isn't it? I think it's still 500. And she'd have worked out the unit price to know which one was the best deal. Because, yeah, sometimes even on half price, it's not the best deal. So, but no, I'm sorry. I was in a hurry. I had Thomas with me. It was hot. I just wanted to get the chocolate and get home. I had to buy this today. So, but yeah, look, honestly, if you can get the Aldi chocolate, Aldi chocolate's actually quite nice. It's um, it's different to Cadbury. I think it's closer to Lind, but it's still nice chocolate. And for the price, it's great value. So. Just Google it on Google. Oh, I'll let you know. Hannah's just Googling the unit price for the um, chocolate for us. So then she'll go, no, 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 you didn't get the good price. Oh, look at these things. Yes, I do have to look you at these things. This and you don't do it no more. I do do it. Just, I was in a hurry. See, when you're in a hurry, things go wrong, don't they? All right. Now, questions? No more questions? Anyone got any questions? Everyone's still reeling for my rant about meal kits. <sighs> well, look, you know... Everybody want look, we all need to eat. Everybody struggles with the grocery bill. But the grocery bill, your grocery bill is the one bill you have complete and utter absolute control over. Yes, you can shop around for your power, your gas, your phone, your insurances, but ultimately they are what they are and you are stuck with them. With your groceries, you choose whether you pay the two dollars forty one and a half price sale thinking you've got a great deal or you use that two dollars forty to buy two loaves of bread and an apple um you choose how your money is spent so that you get the best value out of your grocery money there's um <laughs> i can't do this diplomatically why are you laughing eve asked if we ever get to see me <laughs> Hannah, you think she's like a puppet and she's just there. <laughs> she's real. <laughs> My girlie is real. We Actually, I'm trying to talk her into doing some um, shows with me. I'd like her to tell you all how she saved up and paid cash for her car. I'd like, you, I'd like her to tell you all how she saved up and paid cash for her overseas trip and came home with money and didn't miss out on anything. Um that, you know, at um, 22 and on a 21 and on a part-time wage, she did that. Um, so, and she was away for a month. a month, a whole month, yeah, a whole month. You worked out this time, it's just more, it is 10 cents more per 100 grams for the 500 gram book. Oh, see, I did the right thing, cheapest chocolate. Just this time. But it's gone up to 133 per 100 grams. Yeah, it's very expensive now. But if it's not on sale, the big blocks are. Yep, okay. So if these size blocks aren't on sale, the larger 500 grams. No, it's 350 now. See, it's even worse. The 350 grams but are better value on a um, unit price 10 percent cent per gram basis. They are better value. Questions, More questions? She's looking, looking, looking. I can't see them, so. All right. Leanne checks the prices before she check, um, goes shopping online. She got a 30 pack of Kleenex toilet paper for seven dollars. <gasps> Where? Wow. 30 pack. What? Um, what size roll? I've noticed sometimes the rolls aren't quite as big. Not to say it's not, not a great deal because it was still be an excellent deal. That's brilliant. Ha ha. Cheaper than Costco. Cheaper than Costco. Sorry. Cheaper than Costco. There you go. Much cheaper than Costco. That's a brilliant price. All right. All right. Yes. Woolworths. Leanne got it from Woolworths. Woolworths, cool. Okay. 
that is a good sign. I don't often get towards because it's in the wrong direction. They just come this way instead of that way. Cold would we be on and off? It would be, yeah. We could just we could get an Aldi or we could get a boy. A Woolworths would be good. I did actually go out of my way to a Woolworths last week to pick something up. Oh, it was a nightmare. And of course, you're in a different store and you don't know where everything is. It was just, oh, it was very stressful. Oh. Anyway, um, the recipes for the caramello slice, the iced coffee syrup and the condensed milk will be in the box underneath but they are all on our website on the cheapskates club website so if you go to the website use the search bar at the top right hand side had those bit of right hand side of the screen type in what you're looking for it will pop up and you can get them from there if you don't want to wait till after the show um, but don't go we'd really like to see you um, they're all frugal they're all easy to do and all good and hot weather oh with the condensed milk um this is another incredible shrinking packaging thing the tins used to be 425 grams then they dropped down to 410 then they dropped down to 400 now i noticed today when i was looking at them they're 395 grams so the recipe used to make the equivalent of two 425 gram tins. So you actually get more than two tins now if you make my recipe going on the 395 grams. I got the equivalent today of um, two and a half tins out of the recipe. And it costs about $2 to make the butter um, in the condensed milk is what puts the price up. Um, but butter, margarine, whatever you like, you can make it with full cream milk, you can make it with skim milk, it doesn't skim milk powder, it doesn't really matter. Um, I just do it in my food processor. I put everything in the food processor, put the lid on and I just let it go until the sugar's all dissolved and, and it's done. I know some of the um, recipes online will tell you that you actually have to cook it on the stove and melt the butter and that was far too fussy and far too fiddly for me. If I can dump everything into one thing and it's done, it works. It's really good. Alicia would like to know um, your thoughts on Costco. Is it worth the membership? Because she's in a crisis as well as going on. Okay. Here's my thoughts on Costco. You need to buy an awful lot of stuff to save the membership fee. It's $59 or $60, $60 for a year. Their meat is grossly overpriced. It's really, really expensive. The meat is so expensive and it's no better quality than what you will get at Aldi or Coles or Woolworths if you want to buy supermarket meat. Um, everything is huge, which is fine, big bulk sizes, but when you go, do you really want to, can you really use, you know, two kilos of lettuce leaves? That's a huge lot of lettuce leaves and you need to use them before they go off. So while it might be cheaper, you think, to do buy it like that, can you use it or are you able to share it with someone who will share the cost with you? to use it up before it goes off. Otherwise, you're putting your money in the bin. You also need to understand that a lot of the stuff they have is luxury stuff. Um, it's not your basic regular pantry items. You can buy flour, you can buy sugar, you can buy a tomato sauce, you know, but they're basics. But just about everything else is a luxury type thing. So you need to think, would you be buying those anyway? If you, you know, regardless of whether you had the membership or not, would you be buying those? Then you need to look at the sizes. Now, the thing with Costco is they don't unit price. So you need to take your calculator with you, you need to take your price book with you, and you need to know your unit prices for the things that you normally buy and how much they are at your regular grocery store. 
and then you need to stand there and do the calculations yourself to work out whether it's cheaper at Costco. Often it'll be maybe one or two cents per item cheaper at Costco, which is why I said you need to buy an awful lot of stuff to save your membership money back. Now, in saying that, they do have some gorgeous things at Christmas time. Their Christmas decorations are to die for. And their Christmas papers, the wrapping papers, again, are to die for. And the quality is amazing. And they aren't expensive compared to what you would pay at a good news agent or good wrappings or something like that um, in a regular shopping centre. So for those sorts of things, they're fine. Electronics, they can be really good for, you know, TVs, um, cameras. cameras. We bought um, a really good Canon camera there and saved clothes. It wasn't even for us. It was for a friend. Saved $180 on the cheapest price we could find out of Costco. So that was a good deal. But they're one-off things that you don't buy all the time. If you're going to go to Costco, you need to be aware that everything's huge. They want you to just load those enormous trolleys up. Everything's big. The trolleys are huge. The conveyors are huge. Everything's huge. So that if you put your one or two things on there that you buy because you know they're a good price, it looks ridiculous and you feel stupid. And even if it's a subconscious, well, this is just daft, look at me, I need more, it, it's working and you're spending money that you don't want to spend. Um, my other issue with Costco is a lot of the stuff they have is brought in from overseas. Now, we have perfectly good dairy farmers. We have perfectly good poultry farmers. We have perfectly good egg farms. We have perfectly good um, farmers growing grain and sugar and all sorts of things here in Australia. And we should be supporting them rather than buying eggs and milk brought in from New Zealand or blueberries brought in from the UK. Seriously? Blueberries from the UK. How old are they? How, how the, the footprint is enormous on that. So that's another thing that really I'm not a fan of Costco because of that. Then you go to the bakery department and Hannah's rolling her eyes at me because she knows what I'm going to say. And the cakes are lovely, but they're huge. So you get these ginormous, bigger than the Texas muffins, cupcakes. They're enormous. They're probably, <coughs> yeah, yeah, roughly, excuse me, caramel size, but about that size. So the inside of my bread and butter plate. And they are cheap. You get um, 20 for $20 on the cupcakes, yeah, or $19.99. But seriously, one of those, that's supposed to be one single cupcake. They're enormous. Or they go the other way and they have really cute little madeleines, which I love to make, little madeleines. They're beautiful. But they'll sell them for four for six dollars. Well, that's a dollar twenty-five each. Well, I hate to say it, but for a dollar fifty I can make twelve. And I don't have to pay $60 for the privilege and I don't have to go to the store and I don't have to log everything home. And No. So, yes, I have a Costco membership. Yes, I do go there probably twice a year, two, three times, maybe three times maybe if we throw in a Christmas trip to see what's, um, what's available. What do I buy there? Hershey's chocolate. Cocoa. Hershey's cocoa, yeah. And it's. Oh, I thought it was on a shelf. Hershey's cocoa, because we like the Hershey's cocoa. It's cocoa. And pure maple syrup used to be the best price, but now Aldi will sell pure maple syrup in the smaller jars, which works out to the same price as Costco. On the maple syrup, Pancake Tuesday is coming up, and Laurie would like to know if our pancake syrup is similar to maple syrup. Our pancake syrup is very similar to maple syrup except that I use vanilla essence in it instead of that imitation maple syrup flavoring stuff 
because I don't like the imitation maple syrup flavoring type stuff. So the pancake syrup is really easy. You could do um, a cup of brown sugar, a cup of water and a teaspoon of vanilla essence and um, bring it to a boil so the sugar is dissolved and that's it. It's really um, that simple, really that simple. And it keeps in the fridge for at least a month too. Um, I usually double it, so two cups of water, two cups of brown sugar and two teaspoons of vanilla essence because they like it and they drown their pancakes with it. But, yeah, um, if you really wanted it to taste similar to maple syrup, you could buy the maple flavouring, but I personally don't like it. And I don't like it's, um, I don't like the imitation maple syrups either. I know Coles does one that's um, really cheap, $2, $2.50 for the bottle, but it's horrible. It's, it's nasty. So, look, it's, you know, if you can't go the pure maple syrup, make the pancake syrup. It, it is delicious. And you won't regret it. Have I ever led you astray, Maureen? Seven dish. Maureen doesn't know about the seven dish. No one does. <laughs> okay. So, Liam has said, um, if you do an online shop and leave your order in the basket, Coles will send you a $10 code to get you to buy. I'm going to remember that. That's a great tip. I wonder how many times it works. We can try it. We can try it, yeah. I, I don't do a lot of shopping at Coles. I know I did some shopping at Woolworths um, a few months back because they had a, a first order was free delivery online thing and they had some really good half price specials. So I took advantage of that. Um, but I don't often do a big shop at Coles, but I'll, I'll remember that. Every time they answer, they do it. Every time. Bonus, folks. They're going to stop doing it now. Yep. Don't shh, keep it a secret. Don't don't keep it within us. This is a cheapskate secret, okay? Leanne's given us a secret. Don't blow it, folks. Because as soon as it gets, as soon as they realise we've cottoned on, like the they'll stop it. Yeah, like the chickens. Who can still get a rain check for a barbecue chicken if they don't have any? Our local coals have stopped handing them out. I've gone, yeah, tough luck. No chickens, you can wait two hours or go without. Mm. Eve said that her local shopping centre has Coles and Aldi and eight more Woolworths open. <gasps> All three? Well, you'll be able to, oh, that'd be grocery special heaven. You know, Coles, Woolworths, Tanner's waving a hand, it must be time to go, is it? Okay. Um, so grocery shopping heaven to have all three in the one centre. Where I shop, I have Aldi and Coles. A really good two dollar shop um a great pet shop but we don't have pets anymore i just thought i'd throw that in there um a reasonable greengrocer nice little bakery good news agents it's a nice little shopping center i like going there and it's it's not closest to home but it's really convenient so anyway folks we've done the Moo coffee syrup, caramel slice. I've shared how to get the condensed milk recipe, and trust me, it tastes just like raw condensed milk. Really does. Some of the ladies that came to one of the workshops when I made it couldn't believe that it tastes just like nestles in a tin condensed milk. All of those um, links will be in the show notes underneath. Um, but they're also on our website, so please go to the website if you want to get them. Type them into the search bar, they'll come up. And please remember to give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing so we know and we can keep going. If you have a question or you have an idea for a show that you would like to see, please use the link to um, the Ask a Question form and let me know and we'll see what we can do about it. And, of course, subscribe so you never miss out and share because the more people that know about us the bigger we'll be the better it'll be for everybody um i'll be back on tuesday night with um i'm not sure what but something really interesting i'm sure okay thanks bye, bye.